Hi everyone, and welcome to another Fast Track ESL episode. We're here today with Sarah, who is an IELTS examiner. She's from our sister channel, Class Clown Series. And Sarah, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Sarah. I was born in Canada, raised in Florida. I also have a teaching background. I'm an English teacher and I've also done teaching for test prep and I've also been a speaking examiner for the IELTS test. Okay, Sarah, how much do you know about the CELPIP exam? I actually don't know that much. I know that it's an alternative to the IELTS exam. Um, it's based in Canada and that's about it. I don't know that much actually. Okay. Well, today we're going to have you take some of the tasks, attempt some of the tasks in the speaking section of okay. CELPIP. Mm -hmm. You think you're ready for it? I think I'm ready. Let's see how it goes. Let's do this. All right. Okay, clicking next. Okay, let's do this. It says, describe some things that are happening in the picture below as well as you can. The person with whom you are speaking cannot see the picture. All right, so I'm just going to take a look here. It's quite a busy scene. I like the colors and I like the action. Um, all right. I think I'm ready. I have two, one seconds. Start speaking now. Okay, so in this picture, we see a uh, a little glimpse of city life. Uh, just a daily scene next to a road. I think there's a plaza in the background and there are quite a few people. There's a couple in the foreground and they're wearing some funky clothes. So I imagine they're teenagers. Yes, um, a little behind them and to the left of the screen there are two children and they're apparently playing with a balloon as uh, another teenager runs across the street in the opposite direction, following a little boy who's bouncing a basketball. Uh, to describe the background a little bit more, there are uh, three people. One is walking a dog, and the dog's next to, next to a fire hydrant. I think he's gonna take a little pee. And then there's a small red car, there's a grocery market in the background, and a bank and a cafe. Time is up. Done. <laughs> okay, so we are moving on. Clicking next. Um, predictions. In this picture, what do you think will most probably happen next? All right, so I already described the scene, so I'm going to focus more on the actions now. Um, uh, time to use some of my imagination, I guess, and... Uh, Cataloging some information. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Ah, a little nervous, but that's okay. Start speaking now. Okay, so in the same picture, I see that in the background there is an elderly couple and maybe they just bought things at the market. So what will probably happen next is that they go home and they start preparing the ingredients for the recipe that they chose. The teenage guy next to them is walking their dog, walking his dog, so he's probably going to go to the park next and continue relaxing and listening to music. The children that are playing with the balloon, uh, their cousin is running across, so probably what's going to happen next is the ball is going to bounce all the way over to the other side and the kid is going to get a speaking to or a reprimanding and the couple in the foreground drinking their drinks, they're also going to go to that same park that the dog walker is going to, and they will proceed to have an argument, a couple's argument. Time is up. Okay. You see a group of people playing a sport at a recreation center. Call your friend Betty and describe in detail what the sport is like and what each player is doing. Ask her if she would be interested in trying this sport sometime. Okay, so the picture is four people swimming, so it's going to be a phone call. Um, describe in detail what the sport is like and what each player is doing. Okay, ask her if she'd be interested. Start speaking now. 
Hello, Betty. How's it going? Oh, that's great. Um, right now, actually, I'm looking at these people playing a scuba diving game, and it looks pretty fun because uh, all of these guys are wearing scuba gear, they have their flippers on, and maybe it's scuba hockey? So uh, that looks pretty fun. Two of the guys are together, so maybe they're on the same team, and the others are trying to get the puck from the other two players. It does look pretty interesting, Betty, so I was wondering, would you want to join me sometime and we can get a team together and we can play scuba hockey? You need more information. Well, uh, just looking at the picture, I'd say, yeah, it's in a pool. Obviously, they need water and there are teams. So I imagine it's just like the rules of hockey, but just underwater. Are you interested? Great. Sounds good. Time is up. So, Sarah, tell me about your experience. Um, well, it's definitely different than the IELTS test. Um, the pictures, though, I feel like uh, I want to know who that illustrator is. <laughs> right. <laughs> kind of looked 80s, kind of like 80s shot, 80s drawn, but... Not the most professional um, uh, illustrator, I'd say. Yes. All right. But um, what do you think about the task itself? Um, it was very true to life, like it's uh, role playing, and those role plays are, you know, situations I would find myself in normally in life, so I guess that's useful. Day so, day from English. part three and mm -hmm. part four, the part where you had to describe what's happening in the image and the part mm -hmm. where you had to predict what's going to happen next, Yes. which one did you find more challenging? Okay, so when we were looking at the picture of the people around the intersection, I would say it was a little challenging to read and understand the second question because they were asking what will most likely happen. So not describing the picture, but imagining what would happen next. So, did you ever find yourself running out of things to say? Uh, yeah, I did. But, uh, you know, with practice, and I had a chance to practice once because I had to do it again. <laughs> but yes, I ran out, but you can use your imagination a little more. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now let's move on to part eight, the mm -hmm. part with a wacky game, underwater yes. scuba diving that slash was. hockey game. Yes. Tell me about your experience with that part. Well, first of all, I want to know if that's a real sport <laughs> because I was like, I've never seen this, uh, nor do I want to, but, or <laughs> play it. But did I find it difficult to explain? Because the task is called describing an unusual situation. Right. And they deliberately come up with these wacky scenarios. It's not, mm -hmm. it's supposed to be very unorthodox and really like out of the, you know, out of frame. the norm. Yeah, out of the norm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, it does help that I think unusually. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, I'm not like a conventional thinker, but. Um, yeah, knowing how to improv scenarios, that's important. Yeah. Uh, just kind of putting yourself in, or just looking at weird pictures and describing those. I imagine those types of activities can help you. I noticed that you, <laughs> you, you talked to Betty. Betty was the person you were talking to on the phone, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. you said, like, Betty, I wonder if you would like to join us. And then you noticed that you still have some extra time. Right. <laughs> what happened there? Um, well, in that way, it's similar to IELTS because there are times where you have to speak a little extra long. So I just had to reiterate, or I chose to reiterate to Betty, well, if you're really interested, then maybe we could. And then I pretended, like I paused a little bit, which is natural in a phone oh, yeah. call. And I was like, yeah, you think it's good? Okay, well, then I'll see you next Friday for a game of scuba hockey, <laughs> right? <laughs> so... Wait. How do you prefer to have someone facing you like an interviewer or are you more comfortable like this just recording yourself on a test? Um, because my job is heavily based on face to face interaction. I'm OK with that, but I can see the advantages of just doing it in front of a computer because then you can speak to yourself. You don't have to think about the other person and how they're looking at you, what they're thinking and all that. So. It's a little less intimidating I see that. to look at a computer. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for no joining problem. us today, Sarah. Yes, my um, pleasure. And thank you guys for watching.